Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So it's time to update the tier list and add Captain America Sam Wilson and Misty Knight to it. Before we get to it, I obviously have to go through all of the mandatory disclaimers here because this list is a mixture of my personal views and current in-game relevance and trends. Please do not use it as a point of argument but as a food for thought instead. Each summoner has different preferences and different needs that far outweigh the importance of this list or any other list made by any other content creator. It's just an interesting point of reference or point of discussion perhaps, but do not use it as a reason you rank up a champion. Please rank champions that will help you get where you are trying to go and do not fly blindly follow these lists. It's very simple. I personally strongly believe in goal-oriented rankups. It doesn't matter where a champion lands on this list or any other list, what matters is what you are trying to do in the game. If you're trying to beat a villain variant, then you're going to be looking for a strong villain. And that's it. That's the thing that matters. Because once you do beat the villain variant, you're going to get rank up materials for your next rank up. And then you're going to ask yourself again the same question. What do I need help with? What I am trying to do? And then if the answer is, I struggle in this lane of Act 6, then you can try and find and rank up a counter that helps you clear that lane in Act 6. If the answer is I need better AQ champions, then you can check out which are the, you know, champions that could help you best in AQ, or Alliance for Defense, or anything else. Point is, this is fun, this is interesting, this is worth talking about, I suppose, but each and every one of your accounts is different, each and every one of your needs are different, and base everything on that instead it's also part of the reason why i will never add you know whether the champion needs high sig or synergies or specific masteries or any of that other stuff because i want you guys to go and check out those champions further find out guides find out gameplay videos and gather as much information as you can before you do make that rank up decision don't just take a look at the list and think oh kt thinks venom is very strong champion i'm gonna rank him up Maybe he's not the champion for you. Maybe he's not the champion for you right now because he wouldn't help you do things that you are trying to do now. Additionally, only champions that are available as six stars in this list. If a champion is not available as six star, they are in this mini list down here with Quake, Magic, Wolverine, Scarlet, Witch, and Ultron Classic. So we have two new champions. We have Misty Knight, which is just placed in useful tier. I think Misty Knight is, you know, perfectly adequate champion. Misty Knight kind of follows the line of Sauron and Toad at the moment, where I do assume that there is a potential way for them to get higher up if it turns out that, that she's very, very, very good for something very specific in the game and, you know, one of the best answers. And perhaps as more people get those champions, they become more popular and then, then you know, we discover more and more uses for them because often we do kind of sleep on champions initially after their release because it's only a limited amount of people who get these champions. That being said, Misty Knight is kind of meh. She has the worst signature ability I have seen in years. Her signature ability is kind of similar to She Hulk's, except She Hulk's is 50 times better because. Her signature ability at SIG 200 has maximum of 40% uptime, She-Hulk SIG has 100% of the uptime, and She-Hulk actually gets more useful benefits than Misty Knight does for the most part. So that is by far one of the worst SIG abilities. And other than that, in her kit, there is a unreliable debuff shrug, which, you know, in skill class is far outclassed by Jabari Panther, by Shang-Chi, by Mole Man, by Kingpin, by OG Black Panther, and plethora of other champions. Then there is, uh, you know, some annoying away for defense. The one thing that she does have going on for her, in my opinion, is the fact that uh, she can remain unblockable the entire fight with guaranteed crits. Then you do need to forego your special attacks, but you can do it. You can have an entire fight an unblockable champion. And it's quite easy and quickly to achieve. So there might be quite a bit of value in that. But that again kind of remains to be seen how far that can take us. Because you can counter auto block with that. But you know still it leaves us miss and evade and plenty of other things to deal with. Uh, she will be for instance very good penny counter 100%. And um, 
again, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with her exactly, but unfortunately, most of her kit is just extremely mediocre. When it comes to Captain America Sam Wilson, then he, I think, is in much better position to actually make a meaningful impact. I think Captain America Sam Wilson right now already has more of a presence in game just by the fact that he happens to be an unstoppable armor defender. But in general, uh, Sam Wilson definitely has tons of utility on his kit, with one of the most notable things being able to block basically anything and bypass nodes like kinetic transference or hard knock life and uh, a lot of other abilities that would trigger when you parry or get hit in a block. There are a couple of champions in game that can do similar things, but nobody quite as well and as extensive. Additionally, he has some power control, he has access to Rapture, obviously he's a tech, so he these days must have access to armor ups, which is quite neat, and he doesn't crit, which again lets him deal with several fights that many other champions couldn't. The biggest kind of drawback uh, is the damage, I think, and also the fact that his power control is fairly tricky to get to. The power control could be a bit more potent. I think 25 sap charges offensively, that's uh, that's a bit of a task. If it would be like 15 or 20, then, you know, would feel a bit more confident on that. But uh, the rest of the abilities are quite easily to access, ac access so it's not that bad overall. Uh, so at the moment, I'm going to put Sam Wilson on frequently useful. Maybe, maybe, just maybe I'm overrating him, but I do see quite a lot of potential in here. Especially because currently in the game's meta, we do have attack modifiers and damage modifiers on pretty much every corner. We have plenty of nodes, even in war right now, where, you know, when you knock the opponent down, you gain a passive fury and things like that. And not to mention that in war, the damage matters significantly less because the health pools are relatively small, comparatively speaking. And war is where everybody puts on the big boy boosts and class boosts and everything else. So Captain America damage output for war and kind of like solo competitive mode potentially as well is definitely not going to be an issue. And when it comes to like Act 7 and Cav EQ, think about it yourself. Cav EQ, every quest has the, you know, damage kind of help that we get. And Sam Wilson will definitely benefit from that greatly. And Act 7 is kind of similar where most of the nodes are more, well, plenty of the paths do offer you an option to do more damage somehow. So I think the lack of damage on his kit, as disappointing as it is, is not as big of a drawback for having all those utility kits pieced in. And thinking of tech archetypes, Sam Wilson kind of has all of the requirements of tech champions in there. He has access to power control, he has access to armor buffs, he has access to heal block with the synergy, so and so forth. So if there is a node that is going to be designed to help a tech champion, chances are it is going to be helping Captain America Sam Wilson as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is where I'm placing him for now. Toad and Sauron at the moment are still going to remain here in the useful tier. Again, I do think both of those champions are perfectly capable of doing things. I just think everything that they do for most part can be done better with other champions. There might again emerge some specific things that we rely on these champions in future as more people get them because initially it's quite easy to overlook abilities because a majority of the player base don't actually actively have access to these champions at any meaningful rarities and only once they have been in the game for a while they have entered basic crystals then people kind of more and more uh, acquire these champions and start to mess around with them and discover new and interesting things because Unfortunately, such is the nature of the game, the new and shiny champion is quite hard to come by. Uh, so I do potentially see either one of them moving uh, up in future, but for that we would need to see, you know, some substantial reasons for it and some very good uses. Like, for instance, I am currently starting to think about Anti-Venom. Now this obviously, again, might be somewhat subjective, but Anti-Venom is a very good candidate to be moving up a rank to frequently useful. Because um, I ended up ranking mine to rank 5 due to the Symbiote challenge. And only after I did so, I realized how good he is for like so many fights in Abyss. Uh, like he can solo Darkhawk with his heal reversal. Then he actually can fight Luke Cage himself as well. Thanks to his Deaccelerate, which effectively works as a slow. And also he has staggers to stop that unstoppable and unblockable from triggering in the first place. 
And moving on, he would have been perfectly fine counter for Dormammu as well. Obviously, old man Logan solo, then he can take on Joe Fixit and heal reverse him. He can do Hyperion and he can do Champion because he has staggers to get rid of power gains and to get rid of uh, Unstoppable. On top of that, he has Petrify to reverse the power gain or slow down the power gain uh, if need be. And he also has the Accelerate just to deal with the Unstoppables. And, you know, all of that stuff and all of that kit would work also for the champion fight. So, I think he's one of those champions that's easy to look past to because of his, you know, seemingly low amount of damage initially. But again, there have been emerging new and better ways how to ramp him up faster. You can get basically the full four debuffs on the opponent within first 20 hits. And uh, that is quite helpful. That's something that I learned relatively recently. He still suffers from having to exchange his utility or part of his utility for damage. And that is, you know, the biggest drawback from the champion. I really wish that it wouldn't be so. I really wish that you wouldn't have to remove the debuffs to gain those furies. I wish it was just keep the debuffs, but you gain furies based on how many debuffs you have or something like that. And he would be so much better as a character. But as is, I do see more value in anti-venom than i thought i would and uh, i'll definitely be keeping a close eye on him don't be surprised if he's moved up in the next list you know, yellow jacket also who's quite similar yellow jacket is proving himself to be more and more useful quite recently um, he's quite good for current alliance war meta as well and that is quite interesting uh he you know as a force of choice was one of the better options for that uh, 631 challenge and in general, I do see more and more people kind of paying attention to Yellow Jacket, and so have I. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I do want to see what kind of interesting things he can deal with overall. Um, another champion that kind of got moved up slightly was Ant-Man, thanks to his synergy. Uh, if he went from being completely useless, then now I think uh, because you can actually ramp him up and do some ungodly amounts of damage, we're going to make him occasionally useful. <laughs> Because uh, that synergy is very good, obviously the ramp up is quite potent. And even though we don't necessarily often need the ramp up characters, the fact that his ramp up, um, you know, relies on the synergies with some very potent, very powerful characters kind of make it plausible for that to actually be useful in some serious content. Craven's still down there where he is. And uh, I don't think I changed much else here. Don't think I have changed too much else on the list. Uh, everything else seems to be still in the place. Uh, top of the game and meta, I didn't change a single champion. Nimrod is still, you know, definitely very much so part of meta. And uh, Ultron, you know, I think it's quite close to getting up there to the very top, but we'll see about that. Perhaps Nimrod too. And the uh, rest of the champions at the moment stay the same. Here's the last thing though. Uh, Baltgrounds beta is going to be dropping tomorrow and obviously this does not take battlegrounds into consideration at all i do think that if and when battlegrounds become significant part of the game that will alter the way we view several champions because if those champions are going to be particularly good for battlegrounds more people are going to rank them up and if you're going to have them ranked up then more people are going to pay more attention to those champions start using them in other pieces of content because why not if you have that champion ranked up already you might as well bring him in act six for instance or act seven if you think it's going to work there so i do expect us to look at perhaps Sil warrior uh with some more pleasant outlook in near future because apparently he's very good for battlegrounds offensively uh, perhaps Vulture, absolutely positive that stock of Visions is going to go up. Stark Enhanced Spider-Man stock is probably going to go up. Iron Man Infinity War is going to be the bane of our existence. Mysterio is going to be a very popular rank up in nearby future. Obviously that all still depends on whatever nodes are going to be in the battlegrounds. But uh, I just wanted to give kind of like a fair warning, fair disclaimer that in nearby future I definitely see where ranking up Mangog... Uh, or man thing might be significantly more important than ranking up like I don't know long shot or uh, the hood or something like that, because even if objectively the hood is obviously much 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 better offensively, then just having these defensive powerhouses for battlegrounds might be even more important. 
it's going to be interesting to see how the game changes once the battlegrounds drops and again after the battlegrounds beta i do plan on piecing together a tier list specifically for battlegrounds uh, and keep these things separate for now eventually i might put them together and redo it all kind of in one but for now i do think that i will be keeping battlegrounds tier list separate and this tier list separate let me know what you guys think and uh, that is about it for now i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'm gonna catch you guys soon see ya Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about